Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we are going to be making a chipmunk having tea time from start to finish with multimedia. Right now, I'm just sketching with my cola erase pencil. I love a nice erasable pencil while I'm doing my sketches because you never know when you're gonna need to go ahead and erase like you're seeing me do left and right. <laughs> Um, when I choose a reference photo that I want to make some art with, I want to make sure that I'm choosing something that makes me say, oh, <laughs> or that just makes me giggle. Those are sort of my criteria for finding a reference picture. And once I find a reference picture that makes me feel that way and makes me want to engage with it further, then I know I've found the right subject and it's going to be cute. Often when I see a subject like that, I do feel intimidated. Not gonna lie, I definitely feel intimidated when I see subjects like this and I think, well, I'm probably not gonna be able to do it. But I do it anyway, I try anyway, and it's not like I was always posting what I made on YouTube and it's not like I still post everything that I make on YouTube. Um, sometimes it's a whole mess, and for instance, right here. So what I decided was that I wanted to do multimedia. I wanted a permanent background, and so I used my Turner Acryl Gouache for the background. And then I wanted something blendable on top, so I was going to use my little gouache palette there, my seal palette uh, to the left. But when I switched out my um, first gouache you saw there was not creamy like this one. This is the Prussian blue. The first one was grayish blue, and it was like grainy and ugh, it was like really gross. But I was able to smush it down enough and then mix it with the Prussian blue, which is awesome and still kind of the way you would expect the Turner Acryl gouache to be. And so it worked out okay. But then we sort of entered a hot mess town when I tried to do the bottom. You'll see here <laughs> some white on top of some gooey, gucky, gross, icky, sticky, grainy, ugh, I don't have enough gross <laughs> things to describe, but you can see there that the grayish brown just has this horrifying texture. It's not going out and now I just am feeling like oh what have I done did I ruin this already I can't I want to get rid of this see those lumps even when I'm trying to smooth it out it's just like I don't know how to explain it it's almost like almost dried glue that you get on your fingers when you're a kid and it just wants to stick together and it doesn't want to spread out it was like really sad <laughs> but at this point instead of thinking well time to throw out this footage no one's ever gonna see this I performed some surgery did some lumpy gunky ugh, removal and Decided I was going to use this as an opportunity to get some texture. <laughs> That's what I told myself. I said, I'm all right, you know what? This is going to be some beautiful texture. And that is what ended up happening in the end. I'm going to spoiler alert. It did work out. But this was the point where I was sort of like, oh, I knew this picture was too cute. I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. I've ruined the background. There's no hope. But I just keep on cruising. You just keep going. And that is the reward. I had my first, oh, the minute that I saw that little baby coming together, I said, all right, see, it's going to be fine. So I made this additional color on top. And in my mind, I thought when it all dries, I'm going to put some beautiful Caran d'Ache Luminance colored pencil on top of this to lighten it up even further. And it's all going to be fine. And that's exactly what ended up happening. So just sometimes knowing that your medium can dry and you can keep doing stuff with it. <laughs> is enough to make you get some hope for the future. So I would just say keep going, keep sticking with it. I've been doing this for a while now. I have a YouTube channel about it. I make art every single day and I have since March 6th, 2020. I've done it every single day unless I was legitimately sick in bed, physically could not do it or at work until like literally after eight. Otherwise I was making something even if it was just something silly and little. And this is now what I am able to do. And I'm, I have to say like, it's really shocking to me when I watch even my own videos, I'm like, I can't, that's not me. Surely I can't do that. And it's so funny how you just keep having imposter syndrome. I continue to have imposter syndrome. It's just the, the intervals of it are a little shorter and I can work through it. Whereas before I would get so discouraged with my imposter syndrome that I would just quit and I wouldn't even try to do things that looked a little complicated or hard. And now just from pushing through that enough, I'm able to make things that I enjoy. So I highly recommend you just keep pushing through. And I decided here that I was going to um, come in with the regular gouache here. And I have to say the colors that I picked for this palette are so friendly for what I mostly do, which is wildlife, animals, especially the cute ones. And here this one goes, starting to look pretty cute. I'm really excited. I do like to add detail 
with my black fountain pen, even though I know it's going to be covered up, but I can still see it somewhat in light of how I use this gouache. I do not use it in super duper thick layers usually. And so I can see something like jet black fountain pen ink through it. And then I know I can use that as my guideline and add back more um, deep blacks when I come back after the paint is dry. And I did do that here. I came back not only with multiple layers of this gouache on top of the acrylic gouache, and the benefit there is the acrylic gouache is not going to lift when I use the regular gouache on top of it. So that background was permanent. I dropped a ton of water on it on the sort of deep gray blue on the top and the pale gray and taupe on the bottom. You can drop a ton of water on there by accident and it's not going to go anywhere. You can wipe it off. You can lean on it. It's not going anywhere. But the gouache on top that I made the hay and the teacup and the <laughs> tea tray and the little blueberry with and the actual animal with, it does lift under layers. And if you get a drop of water on that, it will it will look just like if you got a drop of water on watercolor. It can lift it up and kind of ruin it. So I really liked this mix of media at this point. All I had was a curl gouache and um, regular gouache. And I'm just giving you the slowdown for the satisfying peel, the tape peel. I wouldn't want to deprive you. It did, that is sped up, by the way. <laughs> so here I zoomed in and I'm using my white Posca pen to add some highlights to that blueberry. You can start to see that that's what it is. I'm sorry it's so blown out with the light, but the sun was like full force on this at this point of the day. But this is just the beginning of the multimedia part. And that is the finished chipmunk with a little blueberry in a little teacup and sipping from the teacup. Don't ask me where this chippy is going to put this down if there's a blueberry in this cup. But I didn't film the details that I added with my Caran d'Ache colored pencils, but I did do that. So these are my luminance. I also have some Faber-Castell polychromos in my little pencil jar that I keep on my desk right over here but I really just used the Caran d'Ache Luminance for this one. So I focused on the Indanthrone Blue, which is an extremely dark blue for details like around where I wanted to make the blueberry darker. I used, and yes, I did just add it again, just from looking at it, I wanted to add more. <laughs> I used my Yellow Ochre, um, just all over the body, different places in the body that were light. Um, I used this burnt ochre 50%. I really like how they do that, like Payne's Gray 60% and stuff like that, like that. Um, but I used that to create this real, what I think is a really cool detail on the sort of brick floor. And this was just the result of the emergency <laughs> situation that I had with the gray... The emergency that I had with the grayish brown acryl gouache where it just sort of really struggled <laughs> on the paper but I think that this ended up really cool and I'm so happy with it this was another one where I was real nervous that I wasn't going to be able to do it but I'm really happy with those details hopefully you can see the hay the sort of straw back there and then yeah all the colored pencil details to that and texture i just love when things like this have some cool texture so i hope that you enjoyed this sketchbook session with me i hope that you thought about painting along and and hopefully this will help you get some of the confidence that i sure needed help getting when i was starting to dive into pieces that were intimidating to me this is a course by no means perfect, but I'm, I'm really happy looking at it. And that's my personal standard of if I did what I set out to do. If I look at the reference photo and I giggle, smile, enjoy it, I want to look at my rendition and giggle, smile and enjoy it. And I certainly do with this little chip. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out and I appreciate it so much. I'm just a baby channel and every subscribe I celebrate. Trust me, my husband and I both go to town every time there's a new subscription. So thank you so much for supporting my channel in those ways. And until we meet again, remember to create something cute.